hello. <sighs> hello and welcome to Jason Newland.com. My name is Jason Newland. This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Number 60, I think. Yeah. Number 60. I think at the beginning of yesterday's uh, session, I said it was number 49, but I actually meant 59. Which means yesterday's was 59 and this one is the one next, which would be 60. According to my memory of numbers and counting. So technically this is the most sessions that I have ever recorded in a series ever technically the reason I say technically is because well firstly I'm showing off my uh, my broad array of vocabulary but also there was a time when I numbered the uh, relaxation sessions and I had over a hundred I still do but there was a time that I used to name them I used to you know just give like relaxation number one Relaxation number two, relaxation number three, relaxation number four, you know, until however many I had. And then I started naming the sessions in the same way that I did probably over 50 daily hypnosis sessions. And I used to just call them daily hypnosis number one daily hypnosis number two, daily hypnosis number three, daily hypnosis number four, you know, depending on which one it was. Of course, if it was daily hypnosis number seven, then I'd call it number seven. So, but then, a while later, I decided to uh, re-listen to them and give them a, a name, give the the sessions a title rather than just daily hypnosis number one or daily hypnosis number two or daily hypnosis number three, you know. So that's what I did. But Sixty is quite a good number to have reached, as far as the these uh, sessions go. I've been doing them for quite a few months now. So before I continue with the, you know, actually do the session because I realised that uh, what I've been talking about so far has probably been quite exciting. So before I start being boring, um, I should just remind you to only listen to this or watch this if you're watching on YouTube or, you know, wherever you're listening to it, to only listen when you can safely close your eyes. It will be available this will be available on 
my website to stream and to download and it will also be available on various different podcasts that I have as well but you know I think the website's possibly one of the best places to go to really because you can stream it listen to it or you can download it um, but you can go on SoundCloud it'll be available on iTunes Spotify uh, you know iHeartRadio uh, Stitcher Player FM you know various different places Spreaker as well I'm actually recording it on Spreaker as we speak well not as as we speak but as I yeah I'm recording my voice otherwise how would you hear it I suppose I could I could do these live but I can't be bothered I can't just I don't know quite I've done a lot of these live and there's something quite nice about being able to just sit back and not get too bogged down with you know whether or not it goes you know this for example if the internet cut out or uh, which means that it would like ruin the live session um, also when I make live streams on video let's say uh, streaming on Facebook or streaming on YouTube I have to get myself looking pretty um, but you know for my adoring audience but when I'm just making an audio I can sit here in my clown costume and I can hold my banjo I don't have to play it because it could dis disrupt the the session if I just start going but uh, I don't have to dress up I can just wear my normal casual lay around clothes So that that is a, a kind of a benefit and it doesn't matter what time of the day I make a recording because it doesn't matter what the lighting is like which it does with you know making videos so I was thinking of maybe I should celebrate this being the 60th session so I'm just gonna, gonna wiggle the toes on my left foot. That's it. Right, done that. That's the celebration over with. I suppose the next real celebration should be when I hit hit the centenary. You know, get to the hundred mark, and maybe. Maybe I could do a live stream to celebrate the hundred. I don't know. I mean, if that's if I do one every day of this month, the hundred mark will be sort of middle of January, I suppose. Two thousand and nineteen. Yeah, we'll see. I suppose, really, because I can broadcast this live, 
the audio. It's like uh, kind of have my own radio station in a way. So I can broadcast the audio live. So maybe I might consider doing that. Just have to have to wait and see. Wait and see. Because I have, I have actually, hopefully get the words out now, I have actually done that in the past, where I've, it's not called streaming live, is it, when it's audio, maybe it is, maybe it is streaming live, I seem to, I got it in my head that when you say streaming live, you're talking about videos or, you know, um, film where you can see the person on the screen, a moving picture. But perhaps audio, the spoken word, is still classed as streaming, maybe. I really don't know. I kind of liked the idea in the past of having a radio show. There's a few ideas of radio shows that I quite like. I think one would be where I would be kind of like a standard radio DJ you know, just chatting in between songs. And then I would play just the songs that I like, which is quite eclectic. It's uh, probably mainly 80s and 90s, because that was my my childhood years and then my 20s. So from the age of 10 to 30, those 20 year period is probably my most uh, I don't know what the right word would be. Nostalgic probably probably my most nostalgic years when it comes to music but I like music from the 50s, 60s, 70s and there's loads of music that I like you know that's around even now I like Miley Cyrus's new song it's just when I was younger of maybe there was more, there was quite a few music shows on television. We used to have a particular popular television show aimed specifically at the music charts. So every Thursday, evening about I think it was about 7.30 it might have been 7 o'clock but I think it was 7.30 so it was called and it was on for about half an hour and then every Christmas day there'd be a, an extended version which would last about one hour with the Christmas number one which was always uh, quite a big deal. Especially I imagine to the person whose song was number one at Christmas. And I bet when they got to number one, they did more, way more to celebrate than just wiggling their toes. So Top of the Pops used to be on 
pretty much every week for 20 or 30 years so I grew up with it I used to watch it I even remember watching Top of the Pops with Blondie singing The Tide Is High that was one of my favourite songs at the time but then I guess it was a lot of people's favourite song because it was number one it was the most bought song And I, I think those were the days before radio plays were included in the charts. So I think in probably the 90s, I'm pretty sure the 90s or the 2000s, radio airplay used to count towards the popularity of the songs in the charts I don't think I made that up I think it did happen and then of course with the internet and streaming music uh, on iTunes which has been the main place for quite a while and still is apparently and that's those streams go towards the charts as well the downloads and then things started to change even more because although uh, the general public were purchasing less CDs and then sort of buying the downloads from the computer and downloading the songs instantly or the albums instantly onto their computer or laptop or nowadays probably more f the phone and then Spotify came along and changed things up even more so now the charts because Spotify is a place where you you don't I don't, I don't know I don't think you can download albums maybe you can pay for the actual album but as far as I'm aware their main framework of how they operate is um, you can listen to a lot of stuff on there for free with adverts but also you can pay a certain amount a month where I don't know is it £7 and £8 a month and then you can listen to as much as you want without adverts and you can skip forward to the next song and all that stuff and now the streams even though they're not being bought in the same way as you, you know iTunes used to sell or still does sell singles is uh, I'm not sure how many streams constitute a sale but uh, the so it's changed the charts quite a lot so it's not just about how many people buy singles or CDs from the shops it's not just about maybe I don't know if radio airplay is still 
included it's not just about how many singles are sold online and downloaded via iTunes and other stores it's also now about the streams how often how many times uh, an artist has their music streamed and played on Spotify and maybe other other platforms as well but Spotify is now the second most popular place to listen to music online after iTunes or Apple Music I can I can see that Spotify may take the top. They may, you know, become the most popular eventually. See, I'm on both. I'm on, I'm on Spotify with quite a few of my podcasts. Also on iTunes as well. So, my main podcast, which is hosted by SoundCloud, is I'm trying to think, it gets a lot of its traffic from iTunes. With Spotify, what they do is it's a different kind of procedure to iTunes because iTunes they if you were let's say it's a podcast it's a different process if you are selling something for money um, then there's a, a different process involved but if you have like I do a podcast and on my SoundCloud podcast, there's 800 plus recordings. But iTunes only holds the last 250 recordings on the podcast. I think it is, or is it 125? I think it's 250. So with iTunes, you you don't upload your MP3 files directly to iTunes. You just submit the RSS feed, the podcast feed, to iTunes that comes from whichever podcast host that you are using so for me my podcast hosts are SoundCloud and Spreaker they're the main ones I do have some podcasts on Podomatic as well And I think on Spreaker, how many have I got? How many different ones? Uh, I'm not sure how many. But with iTunes, you just up, you know, they, you submit the RSS feed, and then they just check it, you know, in a few days' time and. And that they submit it to the podcast directory and you start getting traffic start getting people watching not watching listening rather with Spotify when you submit your RSS feed the podcast feed to Spotify they sometimes take a few weeks to process 
the request but when they do when they do accept it they actually download all of the sessions from your podcast and upload them to their own server so they're not streaming from the podcast your podcast which means that if for any reason I was to delete any of my podcasts they would still be available on Spotify which is I suppose quite a good thing Yeah, I quite like Spotify. I'd like it more if I had, I don't know, just nicer headset. I don't buy a headset, I don't mean like, you know, flying a jet, being a jet pilot, that kind of headset or being in a call centre or being a skateboarder you know I suppose that's a helmet isn't it though I have been called a helmet in the past but so I with the iPhone I got these little earbud things that uh, you know that are used as headphones and they're supposed to go in your ear and I'm guessing they're supposed to stay in your ear well that's not happened with me they just keep falling out and I wonder to myself and out loud obviously to to you that maybe my ear holes are a bit bigger than average is you know I look at my ear and I think is the hole too big have I got a big hole is my hole larger than the average person because the earbuds just fall out. I mean, they, don't, they don't disappear inside. It's, it's always rope to pull them back out again, isn't there? Because of this, the plastic string thing that's attached to them. I realise it's not plastic string. It's wire or <laughs> plastic string. But they genuinely just keep falling out so they don't fall inwards so my holes my hole can't be that big because nothing's falling inside my hole but there's they just constantly fall out of my ears and they're usually okay in the event of me maybe making a phone call so I can do a phone call without holding the phone to my ear and you know for that period of time they're usually pretty much okay but if I try to walk to the shops you know I, I've I've got Audible I don't know if you, if you heard of Audible it's an app that you can download for free but you you know you need to sign up with Audible and um, I think it's £7.99 a month and you can download audiobooks and you get one credit each month for any amount so you can buy a book of any any financial cost and uh, download it and you can listen to the to the book it's because it's a, an audio book and 
if you, and I've never done this myself, but you, if you want to, um, just reject one of the audios and send it back, they will replace it with another audio of your choice. As I said, I've not done it yet and I don't know if they give you another credit or I don't know how it works, but, um, but I've bought a few books and I've had a few credits. I've got some psychology books, uh, psychotherapy book I'm listening to and Because I'm an auditory person, I'm very, very uh, listening, eerie, e eerie, not e e e r y, or e e r i e, um, but hear it, you know, like with my ears. And, um, Yeah, I, I like to listen, and it's, uh, it's one of my ways that I enjoy learning, is by listening, more so than by reading. So to be able to read a book by listening to it, is it means that I read the book a lot quicker than I would do if I was reading it. And also, my eyes don't get tired, which is a good thing. I find my eyes get a bit tired when I read. It's, uh, it might, be, I don't know, maybe it's to do with the medication I'm on. I kind of get a little bit tired anyway, but I used to like being an avid reader. I really, I used to get excited about books. I used to have a, I used to have a, a library of about five hundred books. About ten years ago, and then gradually they kind of, I moved to this town, to. Well, it's more than 10 years ago, it was 2007. I moved to do the degree in counselling. But I moved into this tiny room. And I had all my books stored in these containers. These like plastic containers and they were taken up half the room, basically up to the ceiling. And I'd be banging into them and tripping over them sometimes. And so eventually I started to get rid of some of them. And the first ones to go were the philosophy books. So I gave that, I donated those to charity. And then I sort of went through that and I got to the point where, yeah, I, after the degree course, Yeah, I was also getting rid of some of the counselling books as well. And the main books that were left were the hypnosis books. And I ended up, you know, again, I was living in another small room. This time it was damp and it was the books were getting mouldy and all that stuff. So I ended up getting rid of those books. So I've now got probably got about a hundred books and uh, I'd love to be able to get my book collection up again especially the hypnosis books but, you know I do intend to get a nice big collection again but I remember when I was young I used to have like different things that I would do. Sometimes if I was full of energy, I'd be 
running around at break time, at school, playtime, and I'd be causing trouble and just being cheeky and, you know, zooming around a thousand miles an hour. And then other times, I would hide in a corner and read a book for, you know, days on end. I say, I mean, during the break times. And I went through a phase where I was reading Star Trek books based on the original Star Trek characters, you know, Spock and uh, Captain Kirk and all those people. I don't know what year I was in then, probably probably about 13, 13, 11, 12, 13, yeah, probably about 13, I think, yeah, so I used to do that, I used to I'm not sure if I used to buy the books or if I got them from the library because I, I used to do both. I used to, I was a very frequent visitor to my local library during my childhood. I, I used to love getting the new books, especially the ones maybe in the children's section. I was a child, you know, and or kind of the young adults reading, and but I also liked factual stuff. I quite like reading a lot of the factual books. They were you couldn't take them out of the library. They were part of the reference library you know so they were big books and they weren't allowed to be taken out so sometimes I would sit and read them but I like the smell of a new book the print and there was something about holding something that nobody else had touched Um, and all the of doing that ran out once I got into my teens but yeah there's it something about just having like the fresh smell of the printed page and knowing that no one else had read it even though thousands of people have probably read it, or you know, but just other copies of that book, not that particular book itself. I like the idea of being the first person to read that copy of the book. And I used to also have my own collection of books. And my dad had this, he put some shelves up for me, but they weren't, they were like on a, so I'm trying to think back to it. So it's, I think there was at least two shelves and there was this, and they were just like, on their own but one on top of the other you know with a gap on the wall and I used to try and put something either side of the books as like a uh, an end you know a stopper to the books uh, a bookend or whatever you want to call it but the books got too heavy and it the uh, kept falling off the 
shelves kept collapsing because there was too many books on there especially during my phase of science fiction I went through a, a phase when I was reading really really uh, big thick extremely adult science fiction books I don't know how I got into it but I used to really like reading them for a while I'm trying to think what other books oh I'll tell you I'll tell you let me tell you this there was a book that I found to be one of the funniest things I'd ever read ever when I was a kid and I was probably I was a teenager so I wasn't like a, a small child but I was a small teenager I wasn't very big but this book was called Wilt W-I-L-T and it was Tom Sharp that wrote it and it's one of the first books that I ever read that, that made that I do was laughing out loud really laughing really strongly laughing so I, I think I read all of the books in the season in the series that he wrote and uh, it's a very famous author he did uh, was it Port a Ship Down and, or Port a House Down something like that he did he wrote a lot of different books but this the Will books were pretty much my favourite and then I went through a phase when I was when I left school I got into psychology started reading psychology books and I quite like the textbooks you know the big thick massive introduction to psychology books I used to read them I used to buy them and, and then there's a, a book that really or some books that really um, sort of st stick in my memory. In 1989, or was it 88? Might have been 88, it might have been 89. maybe it was 88, I don't know um, I think it was 89 I travelled to yeah, I decided to move to Spain and I was going to live there get a job in a bar or as a pole dancer or I don't know just something I was young I figured I could get some you know some kind of work so I bought a ticket in the local travel agency and it was a return but I didn't have a lot of money with me I didn't really think it through and I did have a job at the time, but I just decided not to go back, which is what I did. Well, I didn't go back. So I was in the airport, and on the way to the airport, I got a copy of Fizz magazine. So I was waiting for the bus or the coach to take me to the airport and I don't remember if it was Heathrow or if it was Stansted or if it was where's the other airport I don't know you know I'm not sure which airport it was so but I bought Viz which was a very rude comic but for adults like a comic 
paper, you know, um, you know, like the dandy or Whizzer and Chips or I used to I used to read the dandy when I was a kid. The dandy and looking were my two uh, comics that I used to read every week. I used to collect them for years and years and years. I used to organise them and everything. You know, I used to buy a year. I had them for years. All the way from the age of... Yeah, for probably a good five, six years. Maybe four, five years. Anyway, the... Um, I got this magazine called Viz and I couldn't stop laughing. It was just ridiculously funny, the stuff that was in that. And at the time it was, it wasn't, I mean it became so popular, Viz did, in this country. But at the time it wasn't at its most popular. It was starting to be discovered by people. And then it became hugely popular. Like probably in the early 90s. So I was reading this at Very Funny. And then I'm on the bus or the coach and I get to the airport. and There's about... 16 hours wait until the next uh, well not the next until my my flight so I'm in this airport at times it was busy at times it was pretty quiet because it was all night so I was there all night long waiting for the early morning flight I got there in the afternoon but I had to wait until early hours, you know, probably seven o'clock, eight o'clock the next day. So I was eating and I was sort of trying to get a little bit of sleep and I ended up going to the shop that was inside the airport. I never left the actual airport. I had everything in there that I needed. And I bought a Woody Allen book and I think it the one I got was called Radio Days that was the the first one I got and there was another one called Something Feathers but anyway they weren't they weren't big books they were quite they weren't like long thick books and because I had no distractions really and I wasn't drinking alcohol because I didn't didn't really drink back then so I was just reading these books and I was laughing and laughing and laughing I just couldn't stop laughing it was so funny if you've never read any of Woody Allen's books uh, the early books, especially like Radio, is it Radio Days? Something Feathers. Um, very, very funny. And I actually bought the books because I bought them and I, I might have just left them at the airport rather than carrying them around. I don't remember. But I read about three of his books during that time of waiting for the for the flight. And going there, I was on the plane, and this lady that was sitting next to me, she actually held my hand to comfort me. That was nice. So I got to got to Spain, it was Malaga, and uh, I bought a can of Coke and a Mars bar. 
So I wasn't quite sure what I was eating otherwise because I just didn't really know my way around. And I got a taxi from outside the airport and tried to get him to take me to where the hotel was supposed to be. But he took me on a, a scenic route via Greece, I think. And I had to stop him, see how much it was going to be, and he basically, it was costing too much, so I had to go back to the airport, and uh, I made a decision just to get the next flight back. So that's what I did, so I spent the afternoon in Spain, got there. Yeah, got there sort of midday, left about four o'clock, I was there about four hours in Spain. Yeah. I came back, didn't really have anywhere to live because I'd moved out of where I was living. It's a funny old time. But the point is, if you haven't read the Woody Allen books, the early ones, I think it's White Feathers. It's worth having a listen or having a, having a read. Very, very funny. Very funny. But the Audible book um, app that you can get and listen to books, I think I really recommend it. It's really cool. This has been more of a factual adventure today but that's okay I think each recording is different just some are, I guess some are hugely exciting like this one was but uh Sorry about that. Right, I'm gonna go. I think I might take a walk up to the shops. I might take Andre with me and get some air. And I mean, there's air here as well. There's air inside. But just you know, get a bit of a bit of breeze. Bit of exercise, then come back, and I might make a, another recording later. So this is the second recording that I've done today. Yesterday I did two as well. But I'm thinking that maybe because recording using this app directly to my podcast on Spreaker cuts out a lot of the time that I would normally need for preparation or for editing or for all that stuff. Which means I can perhaps do more sessions. So 
So I'm going to go and I'll speak to you next time.